Okay, everybody, let's go over um, creating a stylized shader ball for this particular object. You can use this shader in pretty much any setting or any on any object. This is just so that you can have a base to start with when you're making stylized textures. Let's go ahead and get started. First things first, make sure you bake your mesh maps. So I'm already starting with pre-baked mesh maps because I'm using uh, Substance Painter's Meat Mat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over now to Properties and I'm just going to start creating this shader. Start with the a fill layer. I like We're going to be working mostly in the base color, so I like to set this to base color. And I like to turn off everything except for the color on my fill layers. I'm going to call this one Base color and let's work with a red so when working with flats or laying out your flat colors you want to work within a mid-tone that way you can add highlights and shadows to it without muddying up your colors now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add an ambient occlusion layer again turn everything off except for the base color I'm going to right click, add a black mask, right click again, add a generator. I'm going to go over to my generator and I'm going to click on ambient occlusion. For some reason, ambient occlusion is always flipped. I don't know why. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to global invert and I'm going to flip it. We can come in here and we can adjust this, but I think I'm going to leave this like it is because I kind of like it. Ne next thing I need to do is, again, I don't want to muddy my colors. So instead of going really dark with my reds, what I'm going to do is instead I'm going to change this to like a purple and I'm going to work up in here in this range as well, this value. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to multiply. And I'm actually going to bring this a little bit brighter. That way, the ambient occlusion isn't quite so dark. Even at its darkest point, it doesn't reach black. That's my ambient occlusion layer. Now next, what I got to do is I'm going to add edgeware. So I'm going to add a another fill layer. Again, you're going to see a pattern starting to appear. Turn everything off except for color. I'm going to grab the base color because I want we're working with the same material so what edgeware is is when something gets worn out it just reveals a less damaged like UV damaged version of your base color so what you're going to do is you are going to set this to be just a little bit higher using the value so I'm going to pump up the value and lower the saturation just a bit so now what I'm going to do, again, add a black mask, right click, add another generator, and instead of finding anything else, I'm just going to click on curvature. So the curvature is a little aggressive, so I'm going to turn this down just enough that it sits on the edges here. So if I rotate around this, we can see that that looks good. So I'm going to, again, it's always important to name your layers, especially when you're creating a new uh, smart material, which is what we're doing in essence. I'm going to call this curvature. That way I know what this layer is affecting. So now what I need to do is I'm going to create a gradient, which is important when you're doing stylized texturing. Um, most hand-painted textures have a gradient going from bottom to top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, again, another fill layer. I'm going to select this eyedropper, and I'm going to use the same color that I used for my ambient occlusion for this particular color as well. And I'm going to set it again to multiply. So as you can see, it's a little dark. But what I need to do 
add a black mask, right click, add a generator. So the generator we're going to be using is going to be the position generator. So this one tends to get inverted as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it. And now, as you can see, I have a slight gradient going from bottom to top that adds a little bit of darkness to my object. It's if it's, you want it to be a little bit more visible, you can up the contrast. And then you can lower the global balance. Probably lower the contrast a bit. There we go. So remember, there are all kinds of things you can do when you're playing around with this to set up the way you want it to be set up. So I can set this like this. Probably change this to more of a purple. That way I can stay a little bit more saturated with it. Grab my ambient occlusion. Change that one's color too. There we go. Kind of liking it and digging it. So there's one more thing we can add. And that's going to be baked lighting. What I can do. And this is where you're going to start playing around with this kind of stuff. I'm going to turn everything off again, except for color. Right click, add filter. So this one is instead of it being attached to a fill layer and having a mask attached to it. Instead, this entire fill layer is going to act as a filter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this filter and I can set this to baked lighting environment or baked lighting stylized. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click baked lighting stylized. Environment allows me to play around with the environment and mess with it that way. But baked lighting stylized, I'm going to change this to a soft light and there we go nice stylized lighting what you can do as well is you can mess with the material or what the material is supposed to look like so i like to up the diffuse cavity so what that does is this kind of creates an ambient occlusion so I can up the diffuse AO and what that means is that this will be darker and these will be darker. The diffuse cavity is kind of the same thing, except it goes for these inset pieces right here. And then I can mess with the dielectric reflect uh, reflection. So what that does is if I put this really high, you can see how sharp this is. This is a fake highlight. This is something we would normally paint in by hand. So what I like to do is I like to turn this down so it's not there but I'm still getting the light because I don't like having highlights that I don't, I'm not in control of. So I like to set that like that. And there we go. So now this is my stylized texture to save this out. I'm going to call this lighting or baked lighting. So now we want to save this. What you need to do, create a folder drop them in, and this I'm going to call stylized underscore shader. I've got this now saved into a file or a folder. I can right click, create smart material. So what doing that does is it adds it to your asset browser. So I can come over here and I can search for it by going to my assets. And as you can see right here, stylized shader. So what's useful about this is I can now click and drag and drop it onto any other object in my scene or any other scene that I may be working on. So the thing about working with this kind of stuff is that Depending on what your object looked like, you still might need to come in here and you might need to, you know, mess with like the gradient a little bit or even mess with the, the lighting filter. That way you can get a look that you're going for. So with my position gradient, I might want to, you know, bring this up. That way I can get a little bit more 
of the stylized look within this uh, object in particular. And I can come up to my texture set list, click on my body. Again, it's most likely my gradient that's causing the problem. So I'm gonna click on the position and I'm going to bring this down like that. And there we go. This is just looking at the base color alone. If I go into material, as you can see, it creates this shininess to it, which again, I'm not a big fan of, but it's a good head start for doing hand-painted stylized textures. I'm gonna leave it here. Hope you guys liked the video. Uh, let me know if you want me to add anything or do anything else with this, and I will see you in the next video.